find out what the C value is so that this will be a perfect square. So I'll show you what I mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to take half of this middle coefficient. Okay, so we're going to take the 10. We're going to divide it by 2, okay, which equals 5. And then what we're going to do is we're going to square that 5. And that gives us 25. So we're going to replace C here with 25. And then now what we have here is a perfect square. And I'll show you what I mean. We're going to factor this. And when you factor it, it's going to be x plus 5 times x plus 5, okay? Or you could just write it as x plus 5, the quantity squared. Now, if you want to double check, you can FOIL this. This is going to be 5x plus 5x, which is 10x, the middle term. The last two terms, 5 times 5, gives you 25. And, of course, the first two terms will give us x squared. But what you're going to notice when you do this uh, factoring here is that this number here is always going to be half of this middle coefficient. So if this was a minus 10x, this would be minus 5. Okay, so this will always be half of this middle coefficient. Okay, let's do another example. So this one here, x squared plus 5x plus c. Okay, we want to find out what c is in order to make this a perfect square. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this middle coefficient, 5, we're going to divide it by 2, and then we're going to square it. Now this uh, time, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, but I'm just going to leave it as a fraction, and I'm going to square the numerator and denominator. So that comes out to 25 fourths, and so that's what C is going to be right there. Okay, now if we factor this, it's going to come out to x plus 5 divided by 2, the quantity squared. So you can see it's half of this middle coefficient and the quantity squared. If you want to double check, go ahead and write it twice, foil it out, you'll see you get back the original expression. Okay, now how do we use that in solving equations? Well, let's take a look at this one over here. The first thing you want to do is you want to get the constant on the other side of the equation, just to get it out of the way. Um, so let's do that first. Let's add 10 to both sides. Okay, so now we have x squared plus 4x equals 10, because these cancel each other out. We're going to take half of that middle coefficient, the uh, number in front of the x. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. We're going to add 4 to the left side of the equation, but we also want to add 4 to the right side of the equation to keep it balanced. Okay, so now when we go to factor this left side here, we get x plus half the middle coefficient, so half of 4 is 2. The quantity squared equals 14. Okay, so far so good. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, when we do that, the square and the square root, those are inverses of each other. They cancel one another out. We're just left with x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 14. Remember, when you take the square root of both sides of an equation, you get two answers, positive or negative. So you want to put that in there on the right side of the equation. Now we're going to subtract 2. And uh, watch out for this here. When we subtract 2 from both sides, I'm going to put that minus 2 in front of the plus or minus sign here. We don't want to put it over here on the right. We want to put it in front of the plus or minus. Okay, so we have two solutions. One is negative 2 plus square root of 14 and negative 2 minus square root of 14. You can do that on your calculator and get a decimal approximation, but this is an exact answer. Okay, last example. This one here, what you're going to notice is that there's a coefficient in front of the x squared term. See the 3 there? So what we're going to do, we, it's easier to complete the square if this is just 1x squared. So let's divide everything in the equation by 3. Okay, so let's do that right now. So everything divided by 3, keeping the equation balanced, we're doing it to everything. So we get x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Now we want to get that constant basically out of the way. We want to move it to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So now we're down to x squared plus 2x equals 3. Okay, now here's where the completing the square comes in. We're going to take half the middle coefficient. So half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So again, just all I did was take 2 divided by 2 and square it. So half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. We're going to add that to both sides of the equation. We want to keep it balanced. We don't want to change anything. Now if we factor this, we get x plus 1 the quantity squared equals 4, okay, 
And if we take the square root of both sides, we get two answers, plus or minus two. The square and the square root cancel one another out. And now all we have to do is subtract one to the other side and we get x equals negative one plus or minus two. So two problems here, two solutions, negative one plus two, okay, which is one, and negative one minus two, which is negative three. So those are your two solutions that will make this equation equal to zero. So this is how you complete the square. Go ahead and take a look at the video again if you want to review it. I'll see you in the next video.